What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So today we're going to be talking about episode 2 of the Beginner's Guide, getting into One Piece Treasure Cruise. Now the thing about this video is that this video is going to talk about team building. Team building is a very important aspect of One Piece Treasure Cruise and if you are bad at team building then I mean you're going to suck at this game. It's just that simple, right? So you need to learn how it works. Now, obviously, you can just go to YouTube, look up a certain piece of content and find a team and then build it. But you're not really learning how the game works. So I think this particular video is going to help out a lot of you guys out there, the beginners getting into the game. And hopefully you'll be able to learn how characters synergize with each other and how to correctly build teams. OK, um, so this is going to be episode two of the beginner's guide. Episode three, I've already got a plan made out for that. But from there on out, I want to see your guys' opinions down below in the comment section as to what beginner style tips or anything or any topics that you want me to cover so that I'll be able to cover them for you guys, for a majority of you guys out there um, in upcoming videos of the Beginner's Guide. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it for team building. So uh, first thing is first, when you go to edit crew, as, uh, as we talked upon in episode one in terms of navigating the menus, this is just going to be the raw team, right? So we've got nothing really on this team except for the captain. And we also have the ship as well, which we will be talking about a little bit later on. But but the first thing you need to understand with team building is understand what are the traits of a character because the traits of a character determine on how good that character is, what type of teams they can be used on, etc. Right? So let's go ahead and just have a look at Goldie Roger for a sec. Now, Goldie Roger is a Sugo Fest exclusive. He is a six star character. Well, technically, he is a super Sugo Fest exclusive. But what about this character makes him unique? Okay, so in the top left hand corner of the character artwork, you can see Free Spirit and Slasher. Those are his classes. Um, don't get it twisted with types and classes, right? So the classes are the free spirit, the slasher, the fighter, shooter, whatever it is. Those are the classes. Now, on the character icon, you can see that in the top left of his character icon, he is a yellow character, or it's called Psy in this game. P-S-Y for Psy, um, which is a yellow character. So you need to know that, okay? He's a Psy character, he's a free spirit, he is a slasher character. Um, another thing to note as well is his statistics. So you can see his HP, his attack, his recovery, and his combo hits. Uh, combo hits aren't really too important for the most part um, but it just goes to show that you know if you have a higher combo hit um, it helps you with taking down certain barriers which I guess could be important in down the line but it's not really that important to note right now but you can see in terms of his attack 2500 attack is I think it's one of the highest in the game or it's definitely up there it, it's very significant 5500 health is very strong as well so it's pretty easy to understand all of that. However, when you dive a little deeper into this character, when you look down the very bottom where the scrolling text is, you've got his captain ability and his special ability. This is probably the most important component of the character. His captain effect obviously will only activate if this character is set as your captain or your friend captain. This is going to be the effect that is going to activate for your entire team. And then his special ability, which you can see will max out at a 13 turn cooldown, because mine is limit break expanded, by the way. Um, and you'll get this effect, okay? Now, there's lots of different effects in the game. I'm not going through all of those effects in this video, um, but we're going to talk about some of them a little bit later on. But all of these components are very important when you are team building. Now, above that, you can see that right where his character title is, where it says Goldie Roger, Captain of the Roger Pirates, on the right hand side, it says super type. So this is only unique to certain characters in the game having access to super type. But this is quite important because in order to activate these effects, you've got certain requirements you have to meet. Now for Goldie Roger, you need to have very specific characters on your crew in order to launch his super type special in the middle of the, of the adventure. So making sure that you read what the super type of a character does to ensure that you correctly build your team so that you can actually launch their super type special, of course. But again, that's not really super important, but if you are are one of these players that have just started through the World Cruise Celebration, you've likely re-rolled for Goldie Roger, so it is important to note that. And then you've got his unlock powers, so these are used, uh, well, can, can be unlocked with Forbidden Tomes, um, or duplicates of the character, and these give you very useful effects throughout the adventure. Um, I have made a very, very old socket guide video, I may put that at the top corner there, it's a very old video, but the information is, is still relevant to today. And then he, of course, has his potential abilities, which are unlocked through his limit break, of course, and you can use tablets to level those up. Uh, one thing that we can also very briefly talk about as well when you look at a character, not every character has a very powerful one, but in the top right-hand corner, you have his 
support effect. Now, these effects uh, we'll talk about in a little bit as well, but support effects are something that uh, for beginners are not too important, but as you play the game, um, the, these effects are very useful and you may want to take a note of. Now, you can also go ahead and switch over to have a look at his crewmate abilities. Now, crewmate abilities are only activated when the character is not your captain. So when they're one of your crewmates, these effects will activate, you know, in, under certain conditions or uh, are going to be active all the time. Like for Roger here, he boosts all your character's base stats by 100. That is phenomenal. And then also all type slots are beneficial for this character. So he gets a lot of matching slots, which is cool. So that's the basic rundown for just the character traits. Now, moving on from that, let's start making a team. So first of all, Goldie Roger, we're going to set him as our captain. But there are different types of captains. So if we go ahead and just click on the icon of Roger... It'll bring us to our character box where we can go ahead and filter through certain things. Now, as we mentioned, you know, Goldie Roger is a Psy character, he's a Free Spirit, and he's a Slasher character. So the really interesting thing about this game is that there are various amounts of different types of captains that you can really have a look at. So, like, first of all, let's have a look at a type captain, for example. Um, like, let's have a look at this character right here. This is another Sugo Fest exclusive, this Snake Man character, who's also a super type character. But his captain effect states... He boosts strength character's attack by four times and then by five times if they have a strength slot or a recovery slot. So this means that, you know, he's predominantly going to be giving, you know, the massive boosts to your strength characters or the red characters, okay? So that just goes to show if you're using this character as your captain, more often than not, you want to be using strength characters, okay? But there are different types of captains aside from strength because we just talked about, you know, Roger, he's a Psy character, but he was also a free spirit and also a slasher character. There are other types of units that you can use. So, for example, let's have a look at uh, Trafalgar Law, for example. We can actually go ahead and just uh, filter by law now because we have the new search functionality in the game, which is quite good. Um, so, this law right here, he is a Psy character, but he's also a Free Spirit and a Slasher, and has a Captain effect where it says, Boosts, Free Spirit, Fighters, and Striker characters attack by 4.5 times with a with full HP, 4 times otherwise, and he has other effects with damage reduction and healing, which is very good. But there you go, you know, you've got characters that can boost all characters attack, like Gold Roger, for example. You've got characters that can boost colors, and you've got characters that can boost classes. Now, there are other types of units that you could really talk about. Like, there are units that can still boost all characters attack, but, like, may have a very specific condition. Like, Legend Tesoro, for example, he's he's got a really absurd condition. Uh, mine is not Limit Break Expanded, but you need to have one of all the classes, um, and you get a boost, but then he says that if you hit four greats, then you get a larger boost after you hit those greats. So there are characters that have like really weird conditions in order to get their larger multipliers. Um, so, you know, just putting it out there that, you know, you've got color captains, you've got class captains, you've got very weird conditional captains, and you've got rainbow captains, of course. But, you know, there's plenty of different types of units as well. Um, but let's just, we're just talking about the majority here, of course. So in this example of this video, we are going to be using Goldie Roger as our captain because he's the main character everyone's going to be re-rolling for. Now, remember, as we said, super type is very important for this character. So we want to make sure that one of the characters on our team, at least, is Kozuki Odin, Rayleigh, Whitebeard, Crocus, Shanks, Buggy, Dogstorm, Cat Viper, or Portgast the Ace. We want to make sure one of those characters are on our team so that when we enter the adventure, we're able to use his super type special, okay? So making sure that is, uh, that is all set in stone. But then having a look at the other four open positions that we have on the team, these can be filled in with whatever you want. So let's go ahead and click on one of them and let's just think about some other characters we can put on. Now, another thing that you can look at is the filter. In the top right hand corner, you've got the favorite button, so we can click that because mine's set to favorite. But if you go over to the filters, you can filter through lots of different things here. We did talk about it very briefly in my episode one beginner's guide video. But there's lots of different things that you can talk about here. So if we go to the special, you can filter character special effects. So in this game, in order to get higher amounts of damage, there are certain specials that you can use to, to basically just give you heaps of damage. So if we go to the boost damage um, slider or the uh, the drop down menu, there's lots of different things. So we can click boost attack. So let's that's just going to filter through every character in your character box that has a special that boosts a character's attack. So, for example, let's just pull up, I don't know, let's pull up this Akainu, for example. This is also a Sugo Fest exclusive. He has a special ability that doubles your strength character's attack for one turn. So, quite simply, what that means is, is any strength unit just gets two times attack. 
it's pretty simple, right? You know, pretty simple. Two times attack. Um, and then if we go by boost slot effects. So, you know how getting a matching slot. I'm sure if you've played the game just a little bit, you would understand that there are different colored orbs that you can get in your characters. And if a character has a glowing orb that is the same type as that character, or it's a beneficial slot, then that will give you two times damage, right? So that's very important to get matching slots when you're doing your damage output against enemies. Now, what this does is, is boosting your slot effects means that the magnification of having a matching slot is going to be magnified by a significant margin. So again, we can filter by characters that boost your slot effects. Again, another Sugo First exclusive is this OG Snake Man that has a special ability. It's a, it's a multi-stage special, so this may be a little confusing, but essentially when you launch it, it gives you a pretty decent orb boost. And then if you hit a certain amount of perfects during that turn, in the next turn, you get another orb boost. It's a really good effect. So this Snake Man is another really top tier unit. Um, so what other effects do we have here? We've got um, boosting attack against delayed enemies. You've got ones against defense reducing, poisoned enemies. These ones are very obscure. I mean, you can't do all three at once, but what this means is, is that if the enemy is delayed, you actually get damage, a, a damage boost against them. So here's special two times attack to all your characters, as well as a two times attack against delayed enemies. So this means that if you're attacking, um, if the enemy is delayed, you get double attack for all your characters, but then you also get double attack because he's just going to be a generic two times attack boost as well. So if the enemy is delayed, you technically get a four times boost with this character special ability, which is pretty awesome. But you know, there's different types of debuffs. You can reduce their defense and you can get additional damage against them with a bunch of characters on this list. You can go and poison the enemies and there are characters that get additional attack boost for your whole team um, if the enemy is delayed. So there's different, there's different types of ways you could go about at it. Boosting the type effects, otherwise known as color affinity in the community. Um, this basically means that, you know, if you've got a strength character, a red character attacking a green enemy or a dex enemy, you do double damage because it's type effectiveness. However, color affinity magnifies the multiplier of the type effectiveness. So if you've got a color affinity booster that is a two times boost, you know, you'll do four times damage against, you know, a type effective damage. So it's really good. It's a really useful effect. Um, only very useful in certain situations. You'll be careful how you use it because it does work in the reverse way as well. So if you're attacking a character that you're normally weak against, you do like four times less damage. It's, it's really, really bad. So you really have to use it effectively, but it can give you a lot of additional damage. And then of course, you've got the chain locking and the chain boosting as well, which is a little bit complex at the beginning, but it also can give you some pretty good damage as well. So boosting your damage is very important. We all understand that, but there are definitely things you have to take into consideration. And that is the gimmicks of the enemy, because you're not just going to be building one team that takes on every piece of content. That's just not possible. You need to be building a team that specifically caters for the content that you're going up against. So this is more talking like GARP challenges, clash events, Colosseums. You can't just build one team that takes on everything. You have to build your team according to the content. Um, so depending on what type of effects you're going to be encountering, you want to be bringing different characters to counter that. So if we go to the reduce status effect, so this is going to be any effect that reduces a debuff that is inflicted to your team. So for example, if there's a, if you get inflicted with bind and despair, there are plenty of characters in this game that can both remove, you know, bind and despair. Um, for example, this free-to-play character, Ambush Lin Lin, she's a relatively difficult character to farm up. However, she is one of the better free-to-play characters in the game. And the main reason for it is, is because not only does she give you amazing utility to remove a bunch of different debuffs, she has actually a little bit of orb manipulation as well, but she's also an attack booster as well. So she does attack boost, orb manipulation, and a utility all in one character. And this is a free-to-play unit. So this just goes to show like, yeah, you can do as much summoning as you want, but some of the free to play units in this game are just absolutely godly and other characters that you need to take on some certain pieces of content, right? So it's just putting you in the back of your mind that you have to think that some of these free to play units are extremely good. So you gotta be very, very careful about, you know, um, you know, just going ahead and going ham summoning when you wanna be farming and using some of those gems to farm content, right? Um, so that's just an example. You know, if there's any debuffs that are inflicted to your team, you wanna be removing those a majority of the time. 
And then there's also ones where, you know, the enemy has a buff on themselves that makes them significantly stronger. So you want to be going ahead and removing that debuff from them or that buff from the enemy. So if they've got increased defense or if they've got, you know, the damage reduction, you can go ahead and try and remove those. Um, if they've got a resilience so they can't die, if they've got a barrier, you want to go ahead and try and remove it, especially if it's only like a one turn barrier. There are characters in this game that can remove barriers from the enemy. Or if they've just got, as we said, that increased defense, we want to make sure that we can remove that increased defense so that our damage is actually going to hit the enemy. Otherwise, it's going to be blocked. So we want to make sure that we can remove um, so some of the heavy defense. Um, and then you've got some other effects as well, like healers, for example. If you want to bring a character that heals your HP back, there's plenty of characters that can do that. Um, their defense reduction. So instead of just you know, removing their defensive buff, you can just outright, you know, reduce their defense with another effect because remember, there are characters that not only reduce defense, but also give you an attack boost against enemies with reduced defense. So it can kind of work in both ways with not only reducing their defense, but also giving you a pretty good boost on top of that, right? Like for example, this Sugo Fest exclusive Nami has a special ability that reduces the defense and then also gives you an attack boost against those enemies. So this can be used in that type of situation as well. So it really really does depend on what you're coming up against, but ensuring you're using this filter functionality correctly to kind of just counter the enemy gimmicks, that's what you want to be going up against. So luckily for us, uh, Roger is a rainbow captain, so we don't really have to worry about, um, you know, bringing certain class characters or bringing certain colors. It really does not make a difference to us because Roger just boosts everyone. So we can just build a team of whatever we want. In this situation here, I brought some free-to-play units and I brought Sugo Fest exclusive Rayleigh so that, you know, Rayleigh is a chain locker and an orb booster. So he actually works really well with Roger in terms of giving you um, a pretty good array of damage there. So let's say all of this is done. There are still a couple of things that we need to take into consideration. Now, beside each of these characters on the team, you can see that there is something called a support. Now, supports are actually very, very important. Um, they will unlock for you at level 100. Um, so if you're a pirate level 99 or below, uh, you're not going to have access to it. But once you do unlock it, when you do click on it, um, you may notice that not every one of your characters is able to be chosen. You can see that only a very select amount of units can be put onto as a support. And the main reason for that is, is because characters have very, very specific conditions for their support effects. So for example, Kozuki Odin with his support effects you can see that he only supports very, very specific units. So Whitebeard, Kinemon, Kanjuro, all a bunch of these units, Goldie, Roger included, right? But then they have uh, an additional effect that can proc in certain situations during the fight. So for Kozuki Odin, changes the supported character slot into a Wano slot and then reduces their special charge time by one turn at the start of the final battle. That's an example of a support effect that will activate at the start of the final battle. Um, uh, but a majority of the time, you're going to be encountering statistical increases. So V2 Jinbei, for example, his support attaches to strength decks and side characters. And all it does is this 5% damage reduction against quick enemies and 9% of Jinbei's base stats are added to that support character that you're attaching them to. So again, like a lot of the time you're just going to be encountering stat boosts, but sometimes really unique effects like, for example, this free to play unit, this Clash Zoro has a very good support effect. He attaches to any slasher in the game and at the, it says boost the type effects of your normal attacks, which is color affinity uh, for your slasher units by 1.3 times when you reach the final battle. Again, another really useful effect. So again, it depends on the situation that you're going up against. Um, but there you go. There's lots of different effects that you can just put on your team to give you a really good advantage during the fight. So there's utility effects. There is damage increases. There are statistical increases. Now, in order to actually level up these support effects, there are a couple of ways you can do it. Either you go ahead and use duplicates of the characters to feed into themselves, um, which is not always the way to go. If it's a free to play unit, obviously it's really easy to do that because you can just go ahead and feed the duplicate copy. However, the effective way of leveling up your support effects is by using these items right here, which are called the proof of friendships. Now, these are very difficult items to get a hold of, especially if you're just starting the game. 
But what you can do is, is when you feed these items to your characters, there are either a chance or a guaranteed chance of leveling their support effects. So you either feed duplicates of the characters or you feed these items to level up their support effects. Um, and by doing so, you wanna get them to level five a majority of the time anyway. And by doing so, you'll give them really unique effects at the start of the battle or during the battle or at the end of the battle. So for this example team here, like let's for example, pick Roger. And in terms of what kind of support we wanna give Roger, it doesn't really make that much of a difference right now. So for this example, we can just attach this snake man character, which just gives a 9% base stat increase. So let's just go ahead and select like that and by doing so it will make that support character be attached to Roger. Now, something that you do need to note is that the cost of the support character is also taken into account for your team's cost. So you can see down the bottom there, 295 out of 999. So I've got a lot of team cost anyway, but just saying if you've got a Sugofest exclusive as a support character, that is a lot of cost that gets added to your team. So if you're a really low leveled account, um, you may not be able to add too many support effects. So just putting it out there. So I'm just attaching all these support characters to the team, and this is just going to show you just another example of one. So this Portgast DA is attaching to Whitebeard once per quest. If the supported character uses a damage dealing or an HP reducing special, changes free spirit and powerhouse characters empty slots and unfavorable slots into matching. So this can be used in a lot of situations just to just give you generating matching slots so, so easily. And then also this Sakazuki, for example, he has a support where it attaches to a strength unit. And then if you've used a damage dealing or a health cut special, he changes all your slots to strength and your strength characters get a 1.5 attack boost for one turn. This is an extremely powerful support effect. And it goes to show that some of these supports are just so broken and enable you to clear content that you wouldn't have been able to do so otherwise. So it's a very important mechanic to take into consideration consideration uh, when team building. Okay, so we've got our team built, we've got our support characters, but there is still one final thing that we need to have a look at, and that is the ships. Now, when you're just getting into the game, what you want to be doing is, is get to Sirip Village in the story mode, which is where you get the free Usopp story mode character, because once you do complete Sirip Village, you know, you defeat Kuro, and you move on to the next story mode, you'll actually be given this ship for free, the Merry Go ship. Now, if you guys would have seen my beginner guide episode one, you would have seen that when we went to the shipyard, it kind of went through a tutorial in how to use the shipyard now in the top uh, right hand corner there's going to be some cola of course and you can level up each of these ships um, all my ships i think are max level but this ship in particular is the one you're going to get very early on in the game and it's really really nice because it gives all of your characters a 1.5 times attack boost and then also makes it a lot easier to land a perfect so this is definitely a ship that you want to be using a majority of the time, um, but there are plenty of other ships in the game. When you do progress a little bit further on into the game, you will uh, go ahead and unlock this, um, the, 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 the Thousand Sunny, which is another 1.5 times boosting ship. And it actually has a ship special ability, which does 50,000 damage to all enemies. Um, this is a cool ship as well. You get this from completing Annie's Lobby. But again, you'll see that there are a bunch of ships um, that I've got on my account here. Now, what are some of the ways where you can unlock some really unique ships? So if we go over to the event island really quick, there are a couple of different ways that you can unlock ships. Now, the first of which, which is a really, really easy way of doing it, is at the very top of the screen, the unlockable quests. When you click on that, you'll see that there are a bunch of different ships that you can purchase here for 30 rainbow gems each. Uh, these ships are some of the best ships in the game. Um, I think that if you're going to purchase any of these ships, especially if you are a newer account, you want to be going ahead and purchasing this one, the Get Ho on this adventure with the whale. This is the best ship for beginner players because it gives you cooldown, it boosts all your characters' attack, it gives you additional pirate EXP as well, so it makes leveling up a lot easier. So I think that the Ho ship is the one that you should pick up as well. But in terms of overall damage, I do think that the Liberal Hind is also a really good Good choice especially if you have goldie roger on your account really really good choice but again this costs 30 rainbow gems so i don't know how how often you know especially beginner players are going to be able to do that because i'm sure if you're a beginner player you want to be going ahead and using your gems for sugo fest balls or for farming content so another way that you can unlock ships is on the challenge menu we have the forests of training now the forest of training there is a bunch of them but every time you complete each of these missions for the first time you unlock a brand new ship for your account and some of these ships are really good some of them are a little outdated and don't, and don't see play anymore and a lot of these content uh, is actually like really difficult as well so don't be too disheartened if you try challenge them and you just get completely washed because 
it is very, very difficult. But um, in in most situations, as I said, you want to be starting off with the Merry Go ship as it's a very generic ship. It boosts all your characters' attack and you don't have to worry about it. Um, but, you know, as you get later on into the game, like this one here, the Moby Dick, which you unlock by uh, by completing the Whitebeard Training Forest. And you'll see that it starts your crew off at only 50% health, but it boosts all characters attack by 1.5, and it gives you a 1.4 health boost. So if you've got a really good way to recover HP, this ship is great because it gives you so much additional health, as well as giving your crew an attack boost. It's really strong. Um, and then another really good ship, I mean, th technically this Jinbei ship is okay if you've got a full team of fighters. Uh, what else is good? This is the Law ship from the training forest this one is uh for slashes and free spirits and it's got a healing special which is kind of unique uh then you've also got like the blackbeard ship as well it uh it gives you minus one cooldown and it gives you the uh 1.55 five attack but you need to have one of those classes each a fighter a slasher a striker and a shooter so it's a little bit difficult to team build with this ship but it is a good ship nonetheless um and then you've got some of the unlockable ships like zunisha is one of the best ships in the game for sure you've got um the big mama chanter which is good um strength x quick ship um, again, you can get this from a training forest. You've got the Ho ship, which as I mentioned, this is probably the best ship to unlock for new players. You've got the Megalo, which is also a really good ship to pick up. Again, this one is also a 30 gem unlockable ship, so I don't know um, if you want to go ahead and invest in that. But I do think currently one of the best ships in the game is the Liberal Hind, and obviously the Aura Jackson, which just released as well. This is obviously like, one of the best ships in the game, but the major downside with this ship specifically is that it only boosts slashes and free spirits, where Whereas the Liberal Hind, he bo it boosts all characters' attack. It's just that your captain has to be one of three classes, which is a lot easier to fulfill compared to making sure your whole team is those two classes. So it is a lot easier to use Liberal Hind, but if you do have the team applicable for it, the Aura Jackson is actually a better ship. But uh, as we said, we're just going to be sticking with the uh, with the regular old Merry Go. And uh, with that... We've kind of gone through most of the things you need to know about team building. The most important thing is to understand what your captain ability is doing. So obviously it makes it a lot easier with Roger because he is a rainbow captain. He boosts all characters attack and he has lots of really cool effects going on. But it does come down to, you know, if you're, if you're running a type team with colors, you want to mainly be using that color of the captain. If you're running a class team, you want to make sure you read what the captain is boosting and then bring characters of that specific class. So luckily for Roger, he is a rainbow captain, so we can run whatever we want. And we've got characters that can kind of complement him. We've got uh, we've got Rayleigh on this team, who's an orb booster. He's also a chain locker as well. Whitebeard on this team has actually got some pretty nice utility. We've got the Shanks for chain boosting and utility we've also got buggy for his utility as well so it really does depend on the content you're going up against but episode three which is going to be coming out later on um, is going to be going into this a little bit more it's going to be diving deeper into team building and how we can take a piece of content understand what the content does and building a team that takes that content on so if you guys are more interested in the team building aspects episode 3 is going to give you more information but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today and if you guys did enjoy it make sure you go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i'll see you guys within the next video